Hi there, I'm Robin here with Zen Audio, and today we're going to be taking a look at tracks. So let's dive in. Now, just like every other DAW, ALK has tracks down the side. And we have five different kinds of track, so I'll go through those now. Now, the first track is an audio track, and this is used for inputting from a vocal or a guitar or if you have an external instrument that has an audio output, you'll be using one of these tracks. And this takes an input of audio here and outputs audio. The next one is an instrument track, and this is where you will load your virtual instrument plugins. And this takes an input from a MIDI device, such as a MIDI keyboard, and outputs audio. The next one is a MIDI track, and this takes input from a MIDI source, such as a MIDI keyboard, and outputs MIDI also. So you don't load any virtual instruments here, you do that in the instrument tracks. And the MIDI tracks are really useful if you want to do several layers of MIDI um, with a single instrument. So let's say, for example, I have a drum plugin here, and I want to do some kick and snare and loop that, and then I want to do some hi-hats and then loop that also. I can make a couple of MIDI tracks and feed them both into my instrument track. You can also load any MIDI plugins into the effects here. Now the next two are a little bit different from the first three um, because these first three are for musical input and output and these two here are for automation. So let's say I want to automate something that has a fluid value like the volume of a track. I would use a control track and I can either automate this uh, with an automation curve so it's pre-programmed in there or I can use um, a MIDI control such as a fader or a knob. Anything that has a fluid value that's not just an on-off trigger. Any automation to do with on-off value or just triggers is done with command tracks. And this could be something like a, a MIDI foot pedal or a button on a MIDI controller or any on-off values in your effects plugins, anything like that basically. And we'll get a little bit deeper into ALK's automation functions in another tutorial. And we can create a new track by going down to the plus button here and I'm going to make a new audio track. And you'll notice that it appears just underneath where the Cray currently is. And if we want to reorder these tracks into a different order, all I need to do is grab the track and move it to where it needs to be. I can also rename these tracks by clicking on the name. And I'm going to call this one Vocal. And I can also use the command TR. Um, to rename a track as well. Now let's take a look at the track controls. Um, here we have the power button, which works in the opposite way to a mute button, in that when the track is powered on, you hear the track. And then if I power it off and play again, we hear nothing. So as you can see, it works in the opposite way to a mute button. The keyboard command for track power on and off is TP. The next is Solo, and Solo works in the same way that it does with other DAWs, in that when you solo a track, then this is the only one that you'll be hearing. And the keyboard command for track solo is TS. Now the third one along is Auditioning, and I'm going to create a couple of tracks right now just to demonstrate. Now we have three instrument tracks here. And this button here is the audition button. And auditioning is basically our word for monitoring in ALK. So when a track has audition turned on, we hear the track. And if we turn it off, then we don't hear anything. Now, because ALK is live performance software, you might want to switch quickly between sounds and try a few things out and rehearse some parts. So we have this thing called hover auditioning, which can be turned on here. Now if I turn this on on all of the tracks, what this basically means is that whenever I'm hovering over a track, this is the track that I'm going to hear. So I'll demonstrate this now for you. Here's the first track. If I hover down here, here's the next one. If I hover down here, here is the next one. 
So when you're not performing, that's a nice, quick and easy way just to audition sounds and try things out. If you want to duplicate a track, uh, we can go here and click duplicate. And this generates a duplicate track underneath. We can also duplicate a track by pressing TV. Then if you want to delete a track, uh, we go to the menu again and press delete track. And we can also do this by pressing T backspace. Now let's say I've got some kind of performance here and I don't want to overwrite these tracks with anything else because it's a good take. What you can do here is go to the menu and press lock performances. And this locks all the record regions on this track. And what this means is that when you record over this area, um, these loops won't record and you'll save the performance that's already in there. We'll get a little bit more into locking in the loops tutorial. Now clicking anywhere around here on a track brings up its track panel, which looks like this. And there's a number of different ways that we can get into the track panel. We can press TT while hovering over any track and TT to get rid of it. And we can also use uh, trackpad gestures. So if we swipe to the right on a track, we enter its track panel. And then if we swipe up and down, we can actually navigate through the track panels with gestures. And we'll get a little bit deeper into the track panel in another tutorial. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful and we'll see you next time.